Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about immigrants and immigration. And I want to talk about communities that I've lived in and the immigrants in those communities. I really love living in communities that have a lot of immigrants in them. And I really appreciate what those people have to offer. And I want to talk about some of those things. One of the most important things to me in life is food. I love food so much, I love eating, I love trying new foods. And whenever there is a community of recent immigrants, there are a ton of restaurants serving that population. And you have chefs from those cultures that are producing traditional food from that culture. And there are often ethnic grocery stores too. So you can go and you can buy raw ingredients like vegetables and spices. And it's, it's just this awesome experience. Like where I live, there are a lot of Chinese restaurants that are fairly authentic because there are a lot of Chinese people at the local university. I've lived places where there are a lot of Middle Eastern people, a lot of Mexican people, and similarly Mexican restaurants and grocery stores and things like that. I've lived all sorts of places where there are different Asian populations. Like in my hometown there's a pretty big Vietnamese population. There are also a lot of Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. And there are restaurants for all of these cultures too. And it's so awesome. Like I really like being able to eat these foods from other cultures, and I feel like it has hugely enriched my life. I also think, though, that immigrants offer a resource for the community in terms of the linguistic diversity that they add. I'm someone who loves learning languages, and there are certain languages that can be particularly valuable to learn from an economic standpoint. Like, if you live in the U.S., learning Spanish is very valuable. There are quite a lot of people in the U.S. who are native Spanish speakers, so if you also speak Spanish, it makes you more attractive to certain employers. Uh, Spanish is also becoming increasingly more valuable economically worldwide, because the economic circumstances of Latin America are increasing. Uh, like, I'm seeing a lot more Spanish content on the web now than I did ten years ago, as another example. So Spanish is one of those languages that it seems like it's already valuable and it has high value. And one of the best ways to learn a language is by immersion and by interacting with native speakers. And if there are native speakers of a certain language living in your community, it makes that language much more accessible to you. And I think that's awesome. It's an awesome resource. And sometimes when I look at the U.S. and I look at some of the anti-immigrant sentiment there is, I wonder, like, are people even considering these factors? I feel super grateful to all the people in my community who speak other languages, especially ones that I want to learn, I mean, if I'm going to be strictly selfish, because it gives me an opportunity to be exposed to the language in a way that I wouldn't if those people weren't there. I'm also really grateful for the food. I also want to talk about skills and culture and ways of thinking. Culture is diverse. And people can have different ways of thinking, and people from different backgrounds can come from different educational systems. Uh, the university near where I live has a lot of students from China, and a lot of students from all over the world. And I've noticed that in certain areas, there are a lot of students from other countries that have abilities that on average exceed those of many of the American students who are U.S. born citizens. They exceed their abilities in a lot of ways. On the other hand, their abilities aren't uniformly better than the U.S. students. They're, com they're often adding a different skill set. So they might be stronger in some areas and weaker in other areas. And I think the effect of putting those people together with people from the U.S. is that you're increasing the diversity of skills available. And assuming you're able to get the team, people to work together on a team, to communicate 
effectively and to work together effectively, if you're able to do that, I think you can produce a lot more. And I've seen this in some at environments in which I've worked, when there's been collaboration, like with grad students working together, with professors working together, and they come from different backgrounds. So this is yet another way in which cultural diversity and immigrants can contribute to society. Um, I didn't talk about that, I was talking more about skills. I also want to mention culture and ways of thinking. There can be very different cultural values in different cultures. Like I see this in my hometown, for example. There's a large Puerto Rican population. And I found, for example, that Puerto Ricans seem on average to value extended family relationships a little bit more than most non-Puerto Rican U.S. citizens. Reminder, in case you don't know this, Puerto Rico is part of the U.S., so Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens. I feel like it's ridiculous for me to say that, but I, I meet a lot of people who don't realize that. But I want to emphasize, though, that that diversity, it contributes a different way of thinking, like a different way of valuing things like family relative to work. Um, I often find that other people from other cultures are a little bit less individualistic and a, a little bit more community-oriented than U.S. citizens who are U.S.-born, and that... <laughs> I find that very welcome, actually. I like that. I think the U.S. can be a little bit too individualistic for my taste, and it can under-appreciate, undervalue community relative to what I would like to see. So these are all reasons why I really appreciate immigrants living in my community. So I just wanted to throw this out there. I just want to like as an expression of gratitude towards immigrants, and also hopefully if you are not an immigrant in the U.S., I hope you can appreciate immigrants as well. And maybe if you're struggling to do this, like if you're someone who harbors some anti-immigrant sentiments, maybe think about what these people have to offer. Uh, whether it's something like food, something like culture and ways of thinking, or tangible specific skill sets, or the opportunity to learn a language. Those are only some of the things. I'm sure I could come up with more, more things if I thought about it more. Yeah, that's what I have to say. Thanks for your time, and have a good day.